Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today we're going to talk about tips to pick up a uh, how to pick a Linux distro that you're going to stick with for a while. Uh, so this actually this question came to me. Somebody said I should do this as a top five, and I thought, well, number one is I already have a couple top fives picked out for the next few weeks, and number two, I'm not sure exactly how I would pick a top five with this topic, but it was an excellent video idea. Excuse me. Um, so here is uh, here's what we have. Uh, we're going to talk about picking a distro and this just comes down to a lot of questions. And the great news about Linux is there's something for everybody. Uh, whether you like modern themes or things that look like they were spawned from the days of Windows 3.1, um, whether you want uh, constantly upgrading brand new cutting edge software or you're just kind of happy that your system never goes anywhere. Um, Whatever type of icons, views, appearances, and how you update your system, those are all questions that you're going to want to ask, okay? Um, so these are kind of the, the, kind of the order. I'll do these in the order they make the most sense. So the first question I would have is, do you already understand how one of the installation cores work? Do you know apt? Do you know Pac-Man? Do you know one of these? Uh, one of the reasons I generally stay in the Debian family is I don't have a lot of time to sit down and learn things. Um, I'm, uh, I got a lot of things going on, and a lot of us have a lot of things going on. There's a number of people that have time to sit down and learn every Linux distro and every package manager and everything and every Windows manager, etc. And that's great, and we need those people, and we need those people that also do videos, so when I do have time or questions, I can find those videos and watch them. Um, but for me... I'm a professional that just needs a system that is good, that is productive. I am always writing books. I'm creating book covers. Um, right now, I'm actually developing a book cover in 3D design, which I've never done before. So that's a learning curve in and of itself. Um, I need to, of course, write and edit books. I need to develop websites. I need to do graphics. And I don't have time to fix systems. So. For me, I already know how the Debian system works. So I generally install, if I need a web server, it's generally Debian or Ubuntu. If I'm installing a distro for a production machine, it generally is a Debian or an Ubuntu base system uh, because I know how to fix it. If something goes goofy, I don't need to do some research. I can boot up a terminal, fix stuff. I understand how the core works. Now, if you already know Pac-Man and you have no idea how the app commands work, you should definitely be doing something like a Manjaro or an Arch or anything else that uses the Pac-Man manager. Um, so that's kind of that first question. Um, do you understand one of these? If you don't, pick one to learn. And I'm not going to say one's easier to learn than the other. I think they're equally easy to learn. It's just they're different. And so figure out what you want to use and then let that kind of pick the family of distribution. Of course, Arch, you'd be looking at something pure Arch, you'd be looking at Manjaro, you'd be looking at Antrogos, and uh, there's probably some other things. Of course, also in Pac-Man, you could be looking at the SUSE branch, SUSE, Gecko, um, anything like that. Um, DNF, does Fedora still use DNF? I thought it changed. I forget. Um, but, you know, you have those issues. Of course, I, I like Apt and, and Debian and stuff like that. So th that's kind of the first thing that I decide. And now we're not talking about testing and spinning things, kicking the tires around. We're talking about a production system. So I have a laptop over here that is a web design laptop that is used that when I am sitting down, it's, it's, uh, I, I, pick out a couple days, a couple hours every day to work. I sit down, I work, I need to get work done. That's the computer. I don't test any distros on it. I already have one operating system on it. It works perfectly fine. Everything is set up exactly the way I need it. So that's the type of computer we're talking about. Um, so that is kind of the, the first thing. Um, the second thing you might ask yourself is, do you like the challenge of learning new computer skills? Um, if you are a person with a lot of time on your hand, maybe you're young, you're just learning, you're trying to pick up extra distros, extra Linux things, extra whatever, what you might do is you might pick a system that you don't already know the core to so that you can learn it 
and take the time to figure it out. So if you're that type of person that wants the skill and the challenge. Now for me, I don't, I, I mean, I love the skill and the challenge, but on my level of priorities, it's really low versus everything else I have to do is really high and all my really high things requires me to have a functioning computer. So that I don't pick a distro that I don't already understand um, for my daily drivers. Um, the next thing I want to ask, and this is certainly one of the most important, is what works well with your hardware. Now, I am not uh, a huge fan of elementary, and a lot of the reason is I've always had bad experience on my hardware. Linux Mint, I've had great experience on hardware. Now, there's about 50% of people that have an excellent, awesome experience with elementary, and for them, it makes a lot of sense to use elementary. Um, if it works with your hardware, that's a key factor. Some people might really want to use one specific distro, but there's something about it just doesn't work right. If it's a big deal, change your distro. Find something else that does work. So ask yourself and figure out what works with the hardware you are wanting to do. Um, the next thing I look at is what style of desktop do you like? Um, I have found, and the reason I run a media PC with a variety of different desktops is I always want to learn new desktop environments. Um, that doesn't take as long to learn as package managers and things like that for me. And so I'm always experimenting with those to see if I can pick up some new skills or is there a better workflow. So I've experimented with KDE, I've experimented with GNOME, with Pantheon, with Budgie, um, all the different desktops out there, I've experimented with all these different desktops. And with that being said, um, I have found that for me, the way that Windows sets up a system is how I am the absolute most comfortable using a computer in the speed and the production I need. And that's why I like Cinnamon. Now there's three different desktop, maybe four different desktop environments that behave very much like that. Um, Cinnamon, Mate, XFCE, maybe LXDE, and Budgie, of course. Um, so those are can all be set up very much, of, of course KDE. All those can be set up like a Windows system. I prefer Cinnamon because it's kind of the closest um, without having the extra stuff that KDE has. It has a lot of modern features that Mate and XFCE don't have. Um, and it has more customizability and more features than Budgie. That's why I like Cinnamon the most. But if you are more comfortable on a Mac type environment, you might be more comfortable with GNOME or uh, Pantheon or one of those other type of things because they have more of that type of feel to it. All right. Um, now, with that being said, um, there's a variety of different desktops you could pick from. So what style desktop do you like? And do you like customizability? If you are a customizing hog, you just love customizing your distros, you want to use something like KDE or, or Cinnamon that just has a lot of customizability. If you're like, I don't want to customize nothing, um, Pantheon, Gnome, um, Budgie's kind of 50-50. Those don't have a ton of customization in them. Uh, Gnome has none except for extensions. Pantheon has none, period. And if you try and fix it, we're going to break it. Uh, um, and Budgie is Budgie has some customization, but not a ton. Um, I scared my kitty. I'm sorry, kitty. I scared kitty. <laughs> He's like, whoa, that was loud. Um, so ask yourself, what type of desktop do you like? Um, and then, of course, with that, what type of look do you like? Uh, Pantheon, hard to change the icons. It's doable, but it's it's not as easy uh, as it is to change in most other desktops. Um, do you like the flat designs? Do you want something that uh, has desktop icons built for it in more modern trend? Or do you want to go something in older trend? Uh, things like that. So that's kind of what I take it there. Um, the next question is which applications and which versions do you want to use? So this is going to determine, do you want a rolling release type distro or do you want something that's static and stable? The good old granddaddy of static and stable is Debian. I mean, that thing gets a new version about every time we have an ice age. I mean, it's the oldest Linux distro. We are at version nine. Okay. Um, versus something like Arch where everything is perpetually changing. Um, I could run I could run the same program three different days in a row and it'll be a different version every single time. Um, so ask yourself that. 
So for me personally, I want my applications to never change. I don't want things to change. For me, I'm happy with security updates. I want to get the security updates. I don't want any feature updates. I've gotten used to the application. I am not learning it how to fix something. And, and for me, every time I figure out how to do something, I get a great new feature. I get a great new whatever. That's when they come along and change it and get rid of the feature that I thought was great. So I want to stick with the old features the, the way they were. Um, other people, though, you really want to have some of the latest and some of the greatest applications. You want the absolute latest versions, and there's places that make sense. Kden Live shipping under Linux Mint for several years didn't work right. It was a buggy version. If you put in the uh, the stable PPAs, you could get the latest version and always have the latest Kden Live. I do that, um, but for the most part, I don't like to do that. I want to stick with a, a version that works, and I don't want the system to change a lot. That's why I like Debian. That's why I like Linux Mint because that's kind of the way they work. Um, so if you don't, if you want all those latest, you want to go with like the OpenSUSE, um, uh, the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is a rolling release. You want to go with um, uh, maybe maybe um, KDE Neon, although it's not technically a rolling release because the base stays the same. The KDE applications may update more frequently. The non-KDE ones may not. Um, that kind of depends. Um, you would want to do an Arch or a Manjaro or an Antergoss, something in that general family. That way you'd get all those. And then the last thing you'd want to ask is what is your backup strategy look like? And I hope you have one. Um, for me, my backup strategy is kind of operating system agnostic. I, I don't use any tools for that. I have a specific day of the month. That day, everything goes through, master backups get made. All my systems are good, so if I ever have a catastrophic loss, I lose no more than one month's worth of work. Um, and that's the way that we should be doing things. Now, a lot of people like to use tools. So things like Linux Mint that I use, uh, the Ubuntu and most of your Ubuntu derivatives, they all have backup tools. Linux Mint, of course, now has the time shift, which is kind of like a backup for your operating system, like the way Windows has restore points. Um, is it time? Is that right? Yeah, time shift. I think that's it. I I, I called it the Mac the the Mac program that does the same thing the other day, and someone called me out on it. <laughs> My apologies. Um, um, but Ubuntu and Mint all have the backup application. This is an application that will run. It will automatically sync files for you, things like that. So if you rely on those type of applications, you might look at something in the Ubuntu branch that has that type of thing. So those are kind of my ways how I would do that. So let's kind of walk in through that. Why do I settle on Linux Mint Cinnamon as my core home distro? And despite that's my favorite and the one I recommend most people try, it's not for me something that I say, everyone's got to use it. Um, so do I understand one core? Yes, I know Debian. And a Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu, which is based on Debian. So it works. Um, what applications, what versions? I don't like stuff to change a lot. Linux Mint, stuff doesn't change a lot. I like it. Um, what works with my hardware? Uh, I personally haven't had a computer that doesn't work well with Linux Mint. Um, they do exist, um, but I haven't had those issues. Um, and uh, for me, um, uh, for me, I use Linux Mint because it works with the hardware. Do I like the challenge of learning new computer skills? Uh, this is a loaded question for me. I like the challenge, but I don't have time for the challenge. Linux Mint has never broken on me. And so for me, that's good. Um, what does my backup strategy look like? Uh, it doesn't matter what operating system I use because I manually run my backups. Uh, and what uh, style desktop do I like? For production, I like something that resembles Windows. So that's why I use Linux Mint Cinnamon. So that's kind of my walkthrough. You need to ask yourself those types of questions and that will hopefully lead you to a distro. And there are a ton of great distros out there. Um, you know, if you just need basic uh, email applications and things and you don't ever wanna um, mess with any system settings or whatever else, elementary might be it, Solace might be it. Um, you know, there's just so many different, uh, so many different distros out there. So asking those questions hopefully is helpful to help you figure out which distro. So what are the questions you like to ask? Let us know in the comments down below.
I hope you've enjoyed this video from Switched to Linux. If you'd like to help support the channel, check out the links at the top. There is another video over here. You can check out our Patreon page down here. And you can check out shop.switchtolinux.com for information on a t-shirt like this or some other designs. Thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.